Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Sunset Rewind here at our awesome studio, Sunset 17 Studio in Costa Mesa, California. I'm Kevin Dole, joined as usual with Mo Patios. We have some special guests today from Huntington Beach High School. We have head coach Brett Brown, AJ Vandermaid, and Nate Tawanu. So, Coach Brown, what can you tell me about these outstanding athletes you brought with you today here? They're studs, you know, both on and off the field. You know, they're high academic guys, uh, phenomenal football players, physical, fast, talented. Um, we expect huge things out of these two guys, you know, as, as leaders and as just uh, football players this year. Awesome. Awesome. We've done, done some research and uh, you've got a very talented squad coming back and uh, we look forward to watching you guys play a lot this year and uh, it should be a great season for the Oilers. Absolutely. Coach, now you played at Marina High School. You were a football and basketball star. I was. How do you I, go? I don't from... know if I was a star. <laughs> well, captain, you did something I, right, right? Yeah. They don't give it to the guy who doesn't yeah. play much. Um, but then you got into coaching. Where did you start your coaching career, and how did you kind of get from that point to where you are now? So I always joke at our, uh, like, incoming parent nights and stuff like that. That my, So my dad's one of 15 kids. Wow. And his whole family is either coaches or in the golf industry. Um, and I'm not very good at golf, so uh, <laughs> I, I went this route. My dad's uh, uncle actually is, is Dick Corey, um, who pretty much started the Modern Day program oh, wow. years ago. He used to be the OC of the Eagles, right? He was. Yeah, back yeah. when they are in the So he was Rollo's coach at, yeah. at, wow. at Modern Day, and then he coached at um, SC, and then he was in the NFL for a bunch of years. <laughs> Had uncles that have been in the NFL and college, Fresno State, deep coordinator for like 15 years. Um, so when I graduated high school, I had a couple of injuries, shoulder injuries, and I started coaching right away at Ocean View High School. Okay. And would go up every summer and spend two weeks with my uncle at Fresno State and, you know, kind of fell in love with it and, you know. So you were just getting a lifelong education in football, basically. I was, I was. And was he there yeah. with Coach Sweeney at Fresno State? He was he, kind of a legend. He was there with Pat Hill. Okay. Oh, okay. oh yeah. a little bit after Coach so Sweeney. He was okay. There with Pat Hill for with the Carr brothers, and you know when they were pretty good for those oh, yeah. those few years. So, Coach, you had a good season last year, and you did some positive things. Um, learning what you did from last season's schedule and your games. What are you looking to build upon this year for the Oilers? I think the biggest takeaway that, that we as a staff and as a team take away from, from last year is that every, every game's important, which we know, you know. But looking back on it, we lost to Aliso in our first game of the season when we were up 14 points in the fourth, in the fourth quarter, you know, and then had a couple turnovers, a couple mental mistakes. And, um, at the end of the day, that was probably that El Toro, a couple other close ones that we had. You know, we were one game away from making the playoffs. Right. You know, and at four and six, we were still one of the top ranked teams in Division Seven. You know, but they would take a five and five team over us. So, you know, we gotta, we can't come out slow. We can't start slow. You know, we gotta be ready to play. Well, those two losses were by one score, and you're saying that had you at least won one of them, definitely both of them, you're in yes, the playoffs. Exactly. I wanted to ask you, does CIF have a cap on how many teams from each league can get in the playoffs? Because you had four teams qualify last year. So theoretically, if, we, if all six teams were 5-0 and and won enough to qualify, you could have six teams in, in six different divisions? Exactly, exactly. And, we, you know, there was still a shot. You know, we put in our at-large, and, you know, we thought we were going to get in, or we had a – feeling that we might, you know, and then uh, they took some teams that were five and five over, you know, the four and six teams, which that's the criteria. So, um, what, what, What's your take on the new format now? Do you like it? If you could change anything, would you? When I say the format, the CIF format. I, you know, I'm a little biased. I, I think I would go more off the rankings than that five and five record, especially playing in a, a tough sunset league, you know, and the opponents that, that we play, you know, if we're ranked – we would have probably been the best team in Division Seven, or one of the best teams in Division Seven, if we got in, and we didn't get in. They took. You know, well, I, Harbor's I, a perfect example. You know, they exactly. You know, playing a tough league, but they get into a division that's more appropriate at their level, and all of a sudden, you know, they're rolling off to CIF. So that's sure. So I, I, I think you know maybe take more of a look at the ratings than the actual record, you know, right. um, and see who teams play and stuff like that would 
would probably be one way to fix it, but right. at the end of the day, we got to win games. Right. Well, speaking of CIF, this is for Nate and AJ. I've got a trivia question. Let's we'll see how much you guys know about Edison High Football. Now, in 2013, they won the CIF championship, but they had to beat a team from their league just to get to the playoffs, and then they ended up playing that same team in the championship game. Do you guys know who it was? Newport Harbor. Oh. All right. Well, let's go to the bonus wow. round then. Okay. I, AJ. I thought I had these guys. All right. Or Nate. Great job. Who did they beat? In fact, if you get this right, the dual man over here is going to buy you guys lunch <laughs> when we're done here next door at the Wild Goose. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> but it's a little tougher now. Who did they beat in the semifinals? Edison. I'm not going to give you a hint because there's financial ramifications Edison. on the line. Say that again. Edison. AJ. Nailed it. Right, you got wow. it. Wow. <laughs> all right. Now, an interesting story These guys about know that their history. one, they certainly do. They played Edison in the preseason. I think they are in the league, and it was like 48-6, something like that. But so, then you beat them in the semis. Yeah. How would you close that gap? We played Edison after a bye, and we thought we were the greatest coaches ever. And, <laughs> you know, came up with this, this great game plan and started doing things that really wasn't us, you know. Out of character stuff. Yeah, yeah. and... It, to be honest with you, we haven't really played very well after a bye. I don't think a lot of teams do because you're not allowed to have gear during that bye right. week. And you kind of, you know, it's good to get guys healthy, but it, you also kind of lose that edge. You do. And after you're playing well, going into season. it, you know, it's to get back to that. So I think it was poor timing, poor uh, game planning, you All know, right. for that game. And then, uh, it was good when we did play them in the playoffs because we we got hot at the right time and we were clicking on all cylinders and and I have to think their know. players were like listen we wiped them out in the preseason we got this and is the coach probably thinking, no 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 it's a different time things yeah. change and so you definitely have that psychological edge on them as well we did and we knew we were better than that I, I can't I, I want to say it was like thirty three to six or something like that right you know um, and we had a bunch of turnovers and just couldn't do anything so. Um, and you were the OC at the time, right? I was the okay. offense coordinator. Okay. So, well, guys, I want to get you involved a little bit here. I got a game for you, and it's going to work like this. You got 60 seconds. All right. One of you is going to read a card. The other one's got to guess what it is. Whoever reads the card, you've got to get your teammate to guess what that word is. But you can't say the word. All right. So, and you can't say a derivative of the word. If it's a swimming pool, you can't say swimming or pool. Right. So, let me grab my cards real quick. Who wants to read and who wants to? Yes. I'll read. All right. All right. Now, come on. But to make sure you got to act it you out. You don't see too. the word. You got to wear these. It's going to impair your vision a little bit. All right. So you're going to knock these all out. Dolman, will you set up the timer for yep. 60 seconds? Like, can I say names? You can say anything that's not on this card. Okay. Okay. So okay. you get him to guess these words in 60 seconds. There's only 10 of them. Okay. All right. And if you get this one right, well, he already owes you a lunch. We'll get you both a lunch. All right. Uh, you can knock this out in 60 seconds. All right. When you start talking, he'll start timing. And it's on you. Go ahead. It's what I do for Jad. Hold. Ooh. It's 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 what. No no he didn't guess it right the first word. Oh it's gonna be the next. Yeah he's gotta say that word. Get him to guess that word. Oh okay well it's what I do for Jad. Holding. Okay. Uh it's what you do after a touchdown. Celebrate. No. The play. The play after a touchdown. Play after a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> The play after a touchdown. <laughs> Come on, more clues. No, more clues. Right, no, close. You, a kick. you get a single point out of it. <laughs> no. Oh. Did you say that? That's right. Go to the next one. <laughs> you get, it's the only play in football you can get two points from. Um, it's, oh. it's also a position on the field I play. Touchback. No. It's a position on the you field. You sack the quarterback in the end zone as a what? Touchback. No. It's a position on the field I play. Corner. Defense. <laughs> yeah. Coach, you might Show. want to jump and help Jeez. these guys. You don't I'm getting... know what he plays? I forget. <laughs> it's the league. It's the league. It's the league. Sunset it's... League. There you go. Us and Marina. What are we? Rivals. No, but like what is like 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 that week, it's it's a what? It's a this one's I don't know. Alright, right. skip, skip it. That's all right. It's uh girls who stay on the track. Cheerleaders. <laughs> uh, it's what they won in twenty thirteen. Championship. But it's what you also put on your finger. The ring. The whole thing. Championship ring. There you the go. Sport. Football. Uh, it's what Jad does. Rugby. Kick. No. Kicks. The other one. Punts. Yes. No. It's what Punting. he is. No. Punter. Yes. <laughs> no. All right. And then uh, it's a flag. It's a flag that you get. This is a flag. Holding. <laughs> and then this last one. 
All right. Look, you it? went way over, so thank God I don't have to that buy was, lunch. But that was, that was too entertaining, so we, we won't even talk about the clock there. <laughs> what was PAT. I was PAT. saying play, play <laughs> after touchdown. I, I think Which, that's, that's what you said. Yeah, I that's know. That's what that, it stands that, for. Yeah, I thought we went after. Well, that was a fun little game, but uh, we got plenty of, you know, your family and folks out there watching. You know, let's uh, get to know you guys a little bit better, learning about you guys. So I'm going to ask you both a couple lightning round questions. Only four questions. Each one of you can answer. Uh, Nate. What person inspires you the most, and why do they inspire you? My older brother. My older brother, because he played college football for a month in Montana State, and I just always looked up to him as like an older brother, and I just always wanted to be like him. So he was kind of just always there for me, and I always just wanted to follow his steps type, type of thing. That's awesome. How about you, AJ? Uh, I don't have anyone that I aspire to be exactly. I kind of want to have my own path, but, you know, like my mom and my dad, they definitely, they're both successful people. I don't want to be someone who struggles in life later. So I definitely want to, I, but I want to create my own path, have my own story, you know. Blaze your own trail. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. absolutely. Good for exactly. you. Good. So we got coach with us, and, uh, you know, football coaches are more than just coaches. They're teachers and mentors. So being on the football field, what are some valuable life lessons that you have learned by playing the game of football, Nate? Um, just working hard. Working hard and staying focused because we really have like key attributes that I think we need throughout life. That's what all the coaches have taught me, especially Coach Brown. Awesome, awesome. How about, how about you, AJ? Uh, one thing that I think is uh, found on the field and in life is having a short memory. <laughs> having a bad play or something. Go it's only going to get life. worse when you get older. Yeah. yeah. AJ, I will tell you right now that is great advice. Thank you. That is great advice. So, AJ, uh, what's your favorite meal and who makes it for you or where do you get it? All right, so my grandma makes a very good spaghetti and goulash. Ooh. Uh, my dad can make ribs pretty well. My mom, she makes little street tacos. Nice. I'm not, I, can't, I can't choose one. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no. going to make a couple people mad if I choose one. Does, uh, oh, Coach, that's a good diplomatic answer. That's yeah. smart. I like that. Does Coach Brown ever get any food? Does he benefit from that? Uh, no. Oh, from the food I get? Yeah. No. Okay. no. How about not you, yet. Nate? Uh, or, Nate, what's your favorite meal and where do you get it? Um, my favorite meal is like pho. My mom makes them really Oh, pho. She nice. Really, she like cooks it overnight, does all that prep and stuff. And then my dad cooks like a really good steak. So That's awesome. It's those two main things I really love. All right. Last one, real easy. AJ, what's your favorite movie? Movie? Yeah. Step Brothers. <laughs> Good Step Brothers. Will Ferrell fans in the house, obviously. And uh, what about you? The university, man? right? Will Ferrell? Yeah, he he's did. a local he guy. Did. With our producer, with as a matter yeah, of fact. Murphy, that's right. University with him. University yeah. High School? Yeah. yeah. Will Irvine. Ferrell. Yeah. He's a local guy. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Nate? What's your favorite movie? Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> that's a great movie, too. That's awesome. So looking forward, Coach, I'm looking at your preseason schedule, and um, the two that stand out in mind, the first one is Summit, and the only reason I'm asking about that is, is it hard to schedule teams? Because you, know, you certainly don't want to schedule Trinity League teams for obvious reasons. You can't play the Sunset League team, so you've already wiped out a lot of Orange County. Do you sometimes have to go a little bit farther than you want just because it's so hard to find an opponent? We do, and we had a, a game with Western that scheduled for that, that week, and COVID kind of messed it up. It was a two-year contract, and it would have been the second year, but the COVID year was technically the first one. So uh, we were in need of a game, and based on the league that we're in, uh, not a lot of teams want to play us, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so we do have to find – And are you the one that opponent. handles the scheduling more or less, or is that an AD thing? Okay. I am. And uh, Summit, you know, they're a good football team from Fontana. And yeah. You know, they got some size, some speed, and I know they played El Toro last year in the playoffs, and, you know, we had a pretty good game with El Toro and thought it would be a good opponent for us and hopefully get us ready for the yeah. league to see some bigger kids and some speed out there too. Good deal. And then Marina, I didn't realize that, but that's a rival game. They're no longer in the Sunset League, but you still kind of kept that tradition going. Does that, does that rival have a name? Like, I know. So we Battle played for a trophy, and it's called the Victory Trophy. Okay. Um, I don't. The game doesn't actually have a name, but okay. the trophy. Itself, but you play for the victory trophy. We do. Got you it. Know, and it's it's been in our locker room for for a few years uh, here. But it's always it's always a battle, and you know the kids get hyped for it, and you know a lot of people come to the game. And how's that coaching down. against your alma mater? 
you know, <laughs> I tell, fun. I, it is, but I, I tell everybody I've been an oiler a lot longer than right, I was. Right. Uh, uh, there's Viking, no mixed emotions. So right, right. No, not anymore. So <laughs> All the first the year was a little awkward, you know, little, right. little, some mixed emotions, but now it's, I, I feel like I went to Huntington now. So good deal. So the Sunset League competition is going to be tremendous as usual. So other than Huntington Beach, who do you think has the best chance to win the Sunset League this year? I mean, obviously, Los Al's got talent everywhere, you know, and, and they got playmakers and college football players, uh, future college football players on their, on their roster, on their team. They're going to be tough. You know, they play well or play hard. Uh, Coach Fenton does a great job over there. He gets his guys ready. He's uh, kind of an old school, you know, hard nose guy that you know gets. Oh, his we know. Teams, we used to coach with them. <laughs> yeah, gets his team to to play hard all the time. So um, they're going to be tough. Edison's always good. You know, um, it's, there's nowhere to hide rival. really in the Sunset League. There's no. not like that free no. game. Corona Del Mar is right. You know, unbelievable. Newport Harbor did a great job. Palm Valley's getting better. I mean, it's like you said. There's there's no down down weeks. You know, we got to get up to play every every single game in the Sunset League. So let me ask you guys this question. You got the upcoming season with your team taking on last year's Huntington Beach team. Who's winning that game? This team versus last year's team. It's a, it's a good question. Um, last year's last year's team because I just feel like we're more connected. But that our team right now, we're getting there one hundred percent. I mean, you had guys like AJ Perez who went off to uh, was it was at Utah Tech. By the way, do you know what Utah Tech used to be? I believe it was Dixie State. And before that, it was Dixie the Junior College. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Well, look, the season hasn't started yet. You guys have been killing the weight room. Coach has been talking about that. So certainly you guys are uh, you know, poised to have a nice little run. Coach, you talked about how important it is to be physical. I mean, you've got the type of personnel that can just pound the rock. And, and certainly, you know, if you think about it, if you can cut, keep these other great offenses off the field sure. by controlling that ball and running that clock, that's going to build well, and I think you guys have a chance to make some noise in this league. I do too, and I, you know, I I really liked last year's team, but I I really really like this year's team too. You know, I think we have a really good core group of juniors that are going to step up and, and help us, and then our seniors who have been through it. Um, I'm not sure who I would take in that matchup. I I think, you know, last year's team was really good. This team it really works really hard all the time, and maybe by know, week five we'll have a better idea. We will. We will. <laughs> Hopefully sooner, but yeah, yeah, we'll yeah see. exactly. Well, hey, one thing I want to ask you about, and we talked about this a little bit on the phone. The end of the year awards, you know, first team all league, player of the year, MVP, all that stuff. How does that work? Is that a cordial process? Because I've been in some leagues where the coaches aren't the best of friends. Let's just say and can get chippy. I've talked to every coach in the Sunset League. They're incredibly friendly, incredibly cordial. How does that work? Where do you guys go? And tell so, us a little bit about that. So, for whatever reason, Huntington Beach is in charge of setting up that. That every all, year, all league meeting okay. every year. So I think it's broken down by sports, and we have football, and Got other it. schools probably have other sports right. in charge of the all league meeting. Um, we've done ours the last couple of years at Eat at Joe's Sports Bar. Oh, yeah, Fed in Huntington, right? Family restaurant. That's so a good place. Our defense coordinator, his wife owns it. You know, so oh, really? our family owns it, and the coaches all meet there. And we we did meet at our school the first year, and. Most of the coaches are like, why the heck are we meeting here? Let's why make it worth our while, there? right? So now they're like, we won't meet anywhere else, you know, and it's it's good. It's We probably spend an hour figuring out all the all-league stuff and then another hour or two or however many were there just hanging out and talking football. It, yeah, and is the rule like if you win league, you get so many, second place gets so many, and just kind of slot it in and yep. you nominate and then debate it? And so we do it where we vote on all of the uh, player of the year and then, depending on how you finish, that's how many first team, second team, third you get team. slotted for positions yeah. like that, right? Or honorable mention, whatever it is. Good deal. That's awesome. So, you know, being a head coach requires a lot of uh, a lot of sacrifice. You know, when we talked to you on the phone the other day, you said the real head coach in the Brown House was your wife. So we just want to make sure we gave you the opportunity to give her a shout out, and uh, all the wives out there of football coaches, how important you are, and we just want to honor and acknowledge them absolutely yeah my my wife you know we have three young kids a nine-year-old a five-year-old and a three-year-old so 
you know, she and she's a full time nurse manager at UCI and still, you know, with our coaching long hours and you know, I joke all the time when I go to to um when we start the season, I go, Okay, I'll see you in December. <laughs> see you you know? Well, so. I mean you're a teacher, which is a full time job. Yes. You're made with kids. That is definitely a full time job. You'll find out someday. Yep. Uh, and then when you're in football season, that, that's a third full-time job. So somebody's got to kind of pick up the slack at home. And for all those wives, for these coaches that step up, I mean, it's, because they do that, it allows you to do the things you do to you know, put a product on the field. So definitely a shout-out to the wives. Absolutely. Okay, with that, guys, we have our last game of the – It's a test of your show. athletic skills here, gentlemen. Coach Patios is going to set the game up for you and explain it to you. This is the Sunset League Cup Challenge. Have you guys seen this on TikTok or anything like that? Okay, we're gonna give you 15 cups, and it's gonna be stacked into a pyramid. The bottom row will be five, then four, then three, then two, then one. Once you've made your pyramid, you collapse it, and it's like this. So it's gonna start like this, you'll make your pyramid, and then you'll collapse it and it'll end like this, all right? Now you guys are gonna do your own, so we'll take the best of the two times. All right, Losal was in on Monday, yes. and the good news is they're great kids, but. They do not know how to do this. And don't think you're going to have a <laughs> so hard time beating them. Not just competing against the rest of the Sunset League in football, but also in the Cup Challenge. And the winning team we're bringing back at the end of the year. We've got a cool prize. We're not going to tell you what it is, but it'll be worth your while. So relax. You're going to stack these. As soon as we say flip it, the dull man will start the timer. And all you got to do is make a pyramid and then collapse it. All Sound right. good? Any questions? No, we're good. You think you got this? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, how you come you on, seem AJ. ready to rock. I don't know. You, just like Sorry, I said, if you're you a team sport, if you fumble, no, I'm not confused. <laughs> he's got your back. I'm like a mess, yeah. though. Yeah, the clock starts as soon as you gentlemen start. And they had a couple collapse, so if you, if yours falls, don't worry, you, you can still recover. All right. All right. So we just gotta. You're gonna flip five. them over. Five, then four, then three, mm -hmm. then two, then one. And you gotta right. put it back. <laughs> we start with touch it. I'll get straight. Ready, set, go. And we're off. <laughs> there you go. See, slow and steady wins the race. Nate's very meticulous in his stacking there. Oh, and he's making great progress. Oh, oh. Wow. you jinxed him. Fumbled. Fumbled up. That's oh, all right. AJ. Oh. Okay, now oh. clap. Oh. <laughs> we get an instant replay on that, Coach? Rolling? Does when we're count? editing. All right, collapse okay. it. And you're good. And stop. Oh. oh. All right, now don't tell <laughs> oh, now him. Now he's going to help him. Oh, no, no, we won't take the best time unless you just want to finish it. That's great teamwork right there, though. Where's the other one? And then just hey. clap. Hey. <laughs> Coach, I will say this. Your players understand the value of teamwork. That's, that's impressive. Hey, the good news is we take yeah. the best of the two scores, all right? right. So we didn't take cost the best. Team, right? That fumble right. didn't cost you the game. That will go down as Huntington Beach's score right there. Um... We won't bad. reveal what Los Alamitos got, but I'm going to say this. Huntington Beach, shape. you did pretty darn good. <laughs> you did right, pretty darn go. good. So you got to tune in to find out who actually wins this thing. Like I said, we'll bring you back and we'll hook you up with something at the end of the year. Perfect. Perfect. Well, that's going to about do it for this uh, edition of Sunset Rewind. On behalf of Mo Patios, we'd like to thank these gentlemen from Huntington Beach for joining us today. I'd like to also to thank our producer, Murphy Cargus and our associate producer, Cole Menzinger. Remember, whether you are a baron, an oiler, a charger, a griffin, a sailor, or a sea king. So you better remember all those. <laughs> I was getting nervous for you. Yeah. Here at Sunset Rewind, we've got you covered. Have a great day, everyone. God bless, and thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming in. All right. Thank you. Thank you.